Recap in minutes. We will be going through an action, war, and drama movie from 1990 named, Memphis Bell. There will be spoilers ahead in today's video, so chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with scenes from 16th May of 1943, at a US Army Air Base in England. Colonel Craig Harriman is on the phone informing his superior about the arrival of new warplanes on the base. After the call, he comes out of the control tower and inspects the planes. Another colonel, Bruce Derringer, points at some men on the ground and asks him, whether they are the crew of the famous Memphis Bell. He envies them saying that they flew 24 missions without a single scratch on them. They see some soldiers playing on the ground of the air base, and a narration starts to introduce them to the viewers. He introduces six men, Verge Hugestager, Jack Bocci, Eugene McVeigh, Richard Moore, Clay Busby, and Danny Daly. After the game, they go near the runway to see the landing of new warplanes. When they are about to leave, they see another plane coming in. They see some kind of malfunction in the second engine of the plane. As it lands, it crashes and blows up into the flames. The crew of the six men goes away after seeing this. In the next scene, Colonel Bruce interviews all the crew members of Memphis Bell, and congratulates them on completing 24 missions successfully. He said that they will be going home after completing one more mission. He tells them that they will be going back home to Bell, flying all over the US, making speeches, and getting people to buy more war bonds. He surprises them by saying that their pictures will be on the front pages of the newspapers, and they will be famous in the United States. First Lieutenant Luke gets elevated when the Colonel tells them that they are going to post their pictures in Life magazine. The crew leader, Captain Dennis, requests the Colonel not to excite his men about this fame and to go home. Because they have one more mission to complete yet and they need focus. The Colonel agrees with him on this matter. After some time, all the crew of the base gets together to rejoice in the victories of their missions in the war. But Dennis goes out of the hall and comes to his warplane, Memphis Bell. He talks to the plane like his girlfriend. He says to it that he is going to miss it after this mission. We have been together all the time and you never let me down. He says that he knows his responsibilities to take care of his men on the missions. He keeps on saying that he will be taking care of his men again on this last mission too. He moves afterward. The next morning, a warden comes to wake them up. He alerts them that they have a mission today so get ready before 6. The crew fixes the bombs on their plane, while they all go to the cafeteria and have breakfast there. After that, Colonel Craig comes to his squadron. He welcomes all and starts briefing them on their mission. He tells them that their target for that day is Bremen. Everyone gets shocked, because it is in Germany and they have to fly all the way there. He orders his major to brief them further. The major starts speaking, pointing at a specific rectangular building where they will have to bomb. He informs them that the building is the Flugzugbohr factory, which is a major assembly plant for their 190 fighter planes. He alerts them to be very precise in their attack as the area is surrounded by the civilian population. He orders them to be accurate while calculating their attack because there are schools, playgrounds, hospitals, and residential buildings. After the briefing, they get angry and worry at the same time, knowing that they will put a lot of bombs in their plane which will lower their speed. When Chief Dennis comes, they move on the runway in their jeep to reach their Memphis Bell plane. The airbase crew fixes bombs, ready the machine guns, and clears the glasses of the plane. When they get to their plane, they start checking the radio, bombardier, navigator, top and ball turret. When Captain Dennis orders them to assume positions to take off, McVeigh tells him that a jeep is coming towards them. The officer asks him to abort the flight at the moment. Dennis asks him why, then he tells him that there is a cloud cover over the target. He orders them to stand by until further notice. They get off the plane and make it recess time for themselves. When anyone complains about the delayed procedure of the management, Captain Dennis calms them down saying that, getting excited will not help them, if they have enough energy for the arguments, try to do some exercise like Val. They tell jokes, read poetry and poems, and explain their plans after this career. In the meantime the officer comes in the jeep, and tells them to get ready for the mission and fly. He orders them to hurry up and start the engines, and be in the sky in 5 minutes. They run to the plane and get on it. Captain Dennis starts the engines and moves the plane in the lanes. After some time, they take it off into the skies. When they were flying in the clouds, Captain Dennis asked Lieutenant Luke about the altitude and climb power of the plane. He tells him that they are flying fine. Suddenly, another plane appears from the cloud in front of them. Luke panics and hides under the control dash. Dennis holds a confident grip on the gear and lowers his Memphis Bell. Dennis saves the planes from a collision in the clouds. After this incident, they make the formations in the sky and move ahead. In the next scene, Dennis intercoms his comrades on the plane to check their arms, and take the positions for the next orders. 
Luke informs them that they are five miles north of the rally point, so get ready. Dennis instructs his men to check their masks regularly for frozen saliva at this altitude. Because the ice gets down there and blocks the oxygen. He orders them to keep their minds on the job, stay alert and work together. When they get closer to the enemy territory, they test their guns and see some other fighter planes joining them. After some time flying in German territory, they spot some enemy warplanes circling them. They get alerted and take the positions. Meanwhile, Dennis orders them to hold the fire until they get close to their range, and don't waste the ammunition. Despite his orders, Eugene opens fire at them. They change their course of flight and come from the other side of them. Val and his fellow gunner aim at the enemy warplanes and shoot them from their top turret. The German planes gave them some tough times. They shot down two American planes that were flying with them in their formation. Suddenly, the German plane shot down another warplane named, Windy City. They all get sad and worried about these crashes. The German planes hide somewhere in the sky after downing these planes. They tried to find them but couldn't. The scene shifts to the base, where Colonel Bruce was preparing the hall to welcome the crew of Memphis Bell. When Colonel Craig comes there, he gets angry at this ceremonial preparation, and says he did not approve of any of this activity on the base. Colonel Bruce says that it is just a minor party to honor the men of Memphis Bell, who remained unbeaten in all of their missions. Colonel Craig orders him to stop this but Bruce insists saying that they are special. Colonel Craig takes him to his office. He gets angry and shows him the letters from the relatives of the dead soldiers. He tells him that all the soldiers on the base are special to him. In the next scene, the crew of Memphis Bell was still looking for the German planes. Suddenly a plane appears from the back of their formation. They start to shoot at him but he escapes every time. Eventually, he targets their lead plane, C Cup, blowing his front apart. Dennis and his men see this crash from their plane. When a pilot falls from the plane, he orders his men to wear a parachute or put the safety strap on. After the C Cup, they become the lead plane in the formation of the planes. Captain Dennis informs on the radio that they all should be ready, as they are getting closer to the target. In the next scene, when a German plane comes at them, they shoot them through the ball turret. While the other plane hits Jack and Eugene dresses bullet scratch. When they enter Bremen, German anti-aircraft guns start firing on them. Dennis puts the plane on autopilot, and orders Luke to close the fuel terminal, as the plane's left wing has been hit by the AA gun and they were losing the fuel. After some time, they reach the target location but cannot see it. They had zero visibility due to the clouds covering the factory. Dennis orders Val to terminate the process to drop the bomb, and turns off the autopilot. Luke gets angry at him when he decides to take a five-minute turn from the point of location. He addresses his formation that he cannot authorize bombing in the city with zero visibility. When they get out of the range of anti-aircraft guns, German fighter planes again come and attack them. Luke goes back to the tail and shoots one of the fighters. That plane falls on one of their formation planes, breaking it into two parts. After some time, they come back to the target again. When Val sees the factory, he drops the bomb immediately. They turn back to go to the base but German retaliation again. A plane comes at them but the ball turret jams again. Rascal calls Verge to save him from falling. He comes and pulls him in. The next moment, Danny gets shot by the German fighter plane. He gets wounded and Jack asks Val to check on him. When he resists leaving his gun, he forces him to go saying that he will control his gun. In the next scene, the German plane hits its wing which results in the burning of its fourth engine. Luke immediately cuts the fuel and turns off the power generators. When the fire extinguishers do not work automatically, Luke asks Dennis to dive down the plane. Dennis orders his formation to follow the wingman plane, as they have to dive down to put out that fire in their engine. The dive afterward. They stabilize their plane when the fire gets out. The scene shifts to Val treating Danny. He tells them that he needs to go to the hospital with this serious condition. Rascal tells them that they have to wait for two and a half hours to reach the base. Then Val advises them to throw him out of the plane with a parachute, so the Germans will take him to the hospital. Rascal gets worried about this advice and says what if they kill him first. He tells him that it's the only chance. Eugene tells him that he cannot even pull the cord of the parachute. He ignores them and says that they have to do it now. After that, they drag him to the door of the plane, but Phil requests Val again to help Danny. He ultimately decides not to push him through the door. After some time, they come near the base and lighten up their plane. They throw their heavy guns and all the unnecessary gadgets into the water. After that, they open their landing gear but the left wheel does not come out. Dennis orders Verge to lower the wheel by hand, and intercoms everyone to get ready for the crash landing. While on the air base, everyone sees them coming down with one wheel. Jack continuously lowers the wheel by hand to survive the landing on the base. 
Somehow they land on the runway with the last push of Jack on the manual gear. The movie ends when they all rejoice at this landing, and every crew member on the base runs toward them. Captain Dennis comes out and cheers them up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe recap in minutes for more videos like this and help the channel grow.